I want a show of hands from everybody. Is there any product or service that you like or love shopping for? I don't believe you. Is there any product or service that you like shopping for? OK. Is there any product or service that you hate shopping for? There better be an opposite response here. Show of hands. OK. So hopefully this is going to resonate, because you're completely indifferent about shopping. Um, I want to take you on a shopping journey. Imagine that you are shopping for a hotel, which probably everyone in this room has done. And the only information that you are given is the name of the hotel, the address, and the price. Kind of painful, isn't it? Imagine you're shopping for a television, and the only thing that you are given is the brand, the model, the type, and the price. Is this making you uncomfortable? I hope. Imagine that you're going to a new city, and you're going to a cool neighborhood. You want to pick a restaurant for dinner. Couple hours, you're gonna spend some money, and all you're given is the name of the restaurant, you're given the type of cuisine, and you're told, maybe the address, that would be helpful, and you're told that it's expensive. No way, you're not gonna book that. So you knew where this was going. This <laughs> is what we have done in our industry. This is what we have created. This is the definition of commoditization. So we've taken flight shopping and turned it into a two-letter airline code, a bunch of RBD codes, schedule, airports. We all know how this works. This is translated to this day, this screenshot I took just a few days ago, into how consumers shop for flights. Airline logo, name, route, times, and a price. And that is it. Now, I know that price is the most important thing or your jobs are the most important in an airline. But I think we would all would share the belief that it's a race to the bottom if we only focus on price and we don't want our products to be displayed like this. In an industry where this is how we are made fun of, take a moment to read that, this is a very bad thing. It's funny but it's a bad thing from a consumer point of view. So I love this quote and how it encapsulates the issue. This is not written about the air travel industry. The reason it seems that price is all your customers care about is that you haven't given them anything else to care about. Hopefully you're hearing some echoing things from what Sharon just said. So obviously the way that we all shop for products and services generally is with rich content. We want to read reviews, we want to see photos. There's no way you would have booked a table at Bell Harlem without actually reading about it. You, we want to see pictures of the TV and videos and reviews and features. We want to see that Amazon certifies it and that it works with Alexa, okay, that's the product for me. When we're shopping for a hotel, we want to know what is included. Does it have free Wi-Fi? Is breakfast included? We want to read the photos. We want to know how people rate the hotel. Uh, we want all this information. The hotel industry, in particular, has just done an outstanding job at, for the last 10, 20 years, at consolidating and refining and honing rich content to express their products in the most compelling and exciting ways. Uh, giving consumers the information that they need to make uh, the, the, the best choice possible. And they've also focused on building emotional connections with their customers so that customers actually love their products. Do you think that those two wine glasses on the table are an accident? Of course they're not. This is merchandising. Even screws. Consumers now demand rich content, photos, videos, reviews, features for screws. And look at the price that this screw manufacturer is commanding on this box of screws, which totally baffles me. <laughs> this is what shopping is. So I have a question for you to take it back to flight shopping. What is the first question that someone asks you when you arrive from a flight? Very good. I had to plant that because I know that you guys were going to be shy and not say it, but hopefully 95% of you are thinking that. You are pricing people generally, but have you ever noticed that when you arrive from a flight, no one says, oh, how much did you pay for your ticket? Maybe not you, but you know, real people who have to, to buy tickets. 
They don't. And the reason is that as human beings, we are consumers. We care about our experience. So Louis C.K., thank you, Kevin, for playing that, was only partially right. Because the reality is that a whole lot of people appreciate the investments that airlines make, and they say, I didn't have enough time to enjoy the Pier Lounge in Hong Kong, that cafe has this noodle bar, and unbelievable boulangerie, and this and that. I didn't get to, you know, I absolutely loved Air Canada's premium economy and the new 787. Have you seen the windows? It made me feel so much better. Have you been in premium economy? I love Americans' new planes that have the bigger uh, in-seat um, in entertainment. And there's a plug and a USB port in the seat, so I don't have to, I didn't even know that they were down there before, but I didn't have to bend down. It's like the perfect thing. The food, Qantas has great food. And human beings, we love good food, and this makes us happy. And uh, oh my god, Delta offers Starbucks coffee and Biscoff cookies. That actually matters to us in the experience. So it's obviously not only about products and services. It's about fares, as we all know, the benefits and restrictions of the fares that we as consumers shop for really matter. Um, and it's becoming increasingly important, critical, absolutely critical, to very simply explain what you get and what you don't get and give consumers the ability to decide what they want. Sharon's daughter will buy basic economy. Sharon's husband is not, is on way to the right of what's displayed here. Um, so it's starting to happen in the flight shopping ecosystem. It's really the beginning stages. So um, we are all learning how to do it, but the industry is taking it seriously. So if you go to BA.com, you click on a cabin, you get a great modal that tells you what you're gonna get. It's actually a little hard to find. BA, I'm sure, over time is gonna get better and better at integrating this, but it's a start. You go to JetBlue, and they have a very visually stimulating way of telling you what you get, what you don't get across fare brands, and including their, their cabins. Sharon's company, Delta, I don't think in the history of flight shopping there has ever been a flight search result that had a turkey sandwich displayed, but that's what Delta's doing. From Seattle to JFK, enjoy complimentary main cabin meals on this nonstop route. So this content, this rich content, is targeted to the flight that Delta is offering. This is a big deal if you just think about yourself as a customer. You're shopping around. There's one set of products that there's just no information on, and there's another one that says, you're going to be well fed, and the food looks good, so you presume it's going to taste good. It's worth buying this product. It's big business. Um, Sharon mentioned the Delta number. United has reported that it expects to achieve a billion dollars in earnings, not revenue, but bottom line, by 2020 from segmentation. So here's what we're up against, though. Indirect channels, lots of direct channels. It kind of looks like this. If you can't see it already, the point I'm trying to make here is there's really no rich content. It's a lot of information, a lot of ads, a lot of options, a lot of filters. None of them are about Wi-Fi or legroom or all the differentiators. It is starting for the indirects as well. So this is Expedia. Expedia now uh, shows some fare brand information. They've got amenities. They've got some flight ratings. They're dabbling in upsell, which is good, just to start. Uh, but they're starting, and that's an important thing. Uh, other sites, United is working with Hipmunk, with Root Happy's help to expose rich content that is targeted by time of day. So in this example, United offers on the uh, Chicago to Newark flight a Stroop waffle, hopefully I've said that right, uh, for breakfast in economy, and they're exposing that. They're also talking about their new Illy coffee, which is a vast improvement for what they, from what they had before, and it's worth on a 6 a.m. flight knowing that that is offered. But on an afternoon flight, so in this example, SFO to New York, 12.45 to 9 p.m., they talk about the savory snacks 
the uh, microbrew beer that they offer, and hey, why not throw in an upsell offer on the lie flat seat that they offer on this US transcon route? It's becoming all about upsell. I think sort of there's a lot of acknowledgement about that. Um, the best way, once you've got all of your pricing and your transaction engines set up so that you can offer an upsell, the best possible thing you can do next is to make it look as appealing as possible, which is what everybody in industries outside of flight shopping has known for years. So the question is, does it work? Um, we at Root Happy have been doing tests for the last couple of years with airlines and integrators, still very early stages, but we are finding that rich content works just like it does in other industries. Webjet, which is Australia's largest OTA, did a test with Root Happy and several airlines, including Emirates, and found that the integration of rich content um, in the search results improved conversion for the people who engaged with the content by 26%. Lots of good examples out there that this industry is actually not as different from other industries in the shopping world as you may have thought. So it sounds a little bit like rich content seems like a heavy lift. And I will admit, there's work involved in creating and refining and managing and distributing and integrating and measuring all of the content. But we are an industry that does really incredible things. So to the Louis C.K. comment about flying in a seat in the air, we build planes that carry other planes between different uh, cities. We do lots of things. So I created a company seven years ago called Root Happy that um, focuses on, aims to be the Switzerland of rich content, um, and doing it in a very standards-oriented, but nimble, flexible, and modern way. So you may be wondering, why did ATPCO invite this rich content guy to their conference? Um, and the, maybe you're not wondering that. Maybe it's obvious, I don't know. Um, but the reality is that when you're spending so much time on price, the more that you are, you in this room and your colleagues are motivated and excited and engaged in adding in descriptive and visual content that describes and makes your product, describes better and makes your uh, products more compelling for consumers, that's the best chance that they have of, expand, of expanding revenue and sales from those products. So very delighted to say that um, the beginning of Root Happy, we sort of didn't, we knew what ATPCO was, but it sort of seemed like the IRS of the airline industry, and we didn't really want to, didn't think we should talk to them. Then eventually, airlines and distributors started saying, Root Happy, you're kind of doing something interesting. You should start to talk to ATPCO. So we started flirting a little bit, and uh, actually, as we started talking, we realized there's all these connection points that make a lot of sense. So I'm very pleased to say that we are down the path of um, integrating in different ways smart uh, connections between uh, ATPCO data and Root Happy content and systems, including optional services subcodes, which is on this slide. So we have integrated optional services uh, industry subcodes into Root Happy Hub, which is our platform where we manage our rich content, so that an airline can associate with any number of photos, videos, tours, descriptions, et cetera, and then flow it into the uh, ecosystem. And my colleague, Jonathan, will be sharing more details on that tomorrow morning. Uh, so ultimately, ATP Code and Root Happy partnership connect price with picture. So I want to close with this. Industries reinvent themselves all the time and transform. When I was a kid, coffee was a commoditized, inexpensive, perfunctory product that people basically just drank in the morning to wake up. Today, it is a highly differentiated, lifestyle-oriented product that practically defines who we are. We spend way more on coffee than we did 20 years ago. And I use this example because I think it reveals something very interesting for our industry, which is that at the end of the day, consumers aren't just looking for the cheapest price, they're looking for value and what makes them happy at the right price.